here is problem five. And I have had a lot of questions about problem five. I understand why it is a very tricky problem. So let's take a look. The question is, what is the common consecutive difference for the linear function p of x is 11? So they tell me that it's linear. That means that the common consecutive difference has to occur at the first level. We can't go past that first column or we don't have a linear function. So they give me three number values. They say that we could have a common consecutive difference of negative 11, 0, or 11. We have the option of does not exist, and then all real numbers. So let's take a look at these answer choices just to start with. D is tempting. But D can't be right because linear functions, this is one of the traits of linear functions, all of them, doesn't matter what shape or size or linear functions are common at the first level. So to say that it does not exist, if it didn't exist, you wouldn't have um, a linear function. So I can eliminate D. All real numbers, well, that means that it wouldn't be a common difference. It can only be one value and be common. As soon as I use more than one value, we lose commonality. So, so those two are not options, just based on theory. So it has to be A, B, or C. I think most folks that I've worked with would pick C, but unfortunately that is not the correct choice, and here's why. This, I'm glad we're looking at this one because this is actually a pretty good question, I think. So we don't have to go too far this way because we know that it's linear and it will be common at the first level. Um, and then we have, we don't have any given values for our x's. I'm going to pick four just because I want you to clearly see what's happening here. This one is tricky because there's no x after the equal sign. We are so used to seeing that, even without realizing it, guys, you are probably so used to that regular function form that when they throw something that's not the regular function form at us, it looks very peculiar. So let's assign these as our inputs and I'll leave plenty of space to do my evaluating of the function p of x and don't let the letter p throw you that can be anything and then this will be where we find the consecutive differences and if it's linear it's going to be common at this level if it's not common at that level it's not linear so I want to take a look at the function itself for just a second, and I'm going to put that right here. So let's read this function the way it's meant to be read. Remember, this is the output, and the output is 11. So what that's literally telling me is that this is 11 the output for everything I do has to be 11. And these are our inputs. So the way you read this function is, is just like this. Let me just focus your attention right here for the moment. Here's what this says. The output The 
the equal sign is the word is. The output is 11 regardless of what you put in, which is the input. Because 11 is constant. There's no variance. There's no x there to raise it up and down. 11 is called a constant. It's not changing. And it doesn't matter what value you choose for the input, the 11's not going anywhere and it's not changing at all because there's no x value to multiply by. So here's what it's saying in terms that we were used to. I'm going to use 0, 1, 2, and 3. So let's put in a 0. P of 0 is 11. Period. End of story. Full stop. There's nothing there to multiply. because that's what the function tells me. The function's the rule that I have to follow. I can't just stick an x on there because that wasn't in the function. Okay, p of 1 is 11, period, because the function did not change. 11 is constant. It's not going anywhere. p of 2 is 11. P of 3 is 11. It hasn't changed. It won't change. It doesn't matter what I put in for x because there's no x to fill in. Okay, a lot of folks would stop right here and say, okay, that's the answer. It's got to be C, but it isn't because look at this. When you do the consecutive difference, remember you're bringing this 11 up, taking away that first one to get 0. You're bringing this 11 up, taking away the second row to get 0. So the common consecutive difference is 0. And I'll tell you this, any time your function is constant, this will happen because there's nothing out there to vary the output. The 11 is constant and that's all you have. So any time you have that constant value, your consecutive differences will be zero and it is linear. I want to show you the graph of this and I think that will help also. So let me come down here and sketch a coordinate plane. Let me first mark the answer B as in boy. Um, here is the graph of the coordinate plane. Um, we know the y-intercept is 0, 0 because that's what happens when x is 0. So we know that it's crossing origin. Actually, I'll just I'm crazy. That's not what y-intercept is at all. The y-intercept is 0, 11. So let me write that out. I am hungry, guys. My blood sugar is probably 20, and I'm not thinking clearly. So I think I'm going to work this one and then go eat a bite and then get it back here. But look at your y-intercept. It does not cross the origin because it's 0, 11. And this is important. This is where I need to graph my line. I also want you to notice that P of X is 11. And remember, that's called function notation. You can substitute Y for the function notation. So Y is 11. This is important. So the Y intercept is right here at 0, 11. P of x 
is a horizontal line that crosses right there. That's why it doesn't matter what you put in for x. x doesn't vary. There is no slope to this line. It's just a flat horizontal line that crosses at 0, 11. This is a tough problem. I know it is. Um, it, it's based in theory pretty heavily. So if you got this one right, pat yourself on the back. Even if you tried this one, pat yourself on the back.